Hello, welcome to the Zender Garden Podcast. Episode 7. It is I, Real Human Xeno Index, presenting today's guests. Ground, TTMLMMLMOM. Cam. Dead Shaman. D. User minus 1. Infar. And. Tristan Covid Bay. Let's start saying things now. <laughs> Let's start saying things. <laughs> Did anyone else hear when Xeno Index was going over my name? That it like played yeah, yeah. multiple yes. times? That sounded awesome. I love that's, it. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I'll have to start by explaining the name. QDTT is the placeholder name for the one music theory that I have come up with that I think actually matters. You expand the diatonic scale by putting in a bunch of short steps that are around 40 cents, and it sounds very cool, and there's a whole bunch of very specific scale structures, and you can find them using QDTT. I think it's a really natural way of working in microtonality into Western music. So, one time... And by one time, I mean uh, yesterday, I was high and I was explaining QDTT while high and I was explaining it like I was trying to pitch an MLM. So, well, I mean, I guess I better just own it. I am now an MLM mom. Uh, My babies are four rats. Uh, I know the resemblance is striking. And I come up with music theory and I'm the only person who loves it. (laughs) Nice. Nice. I guess it's not that I'm the only one who loves it. It's I'm the only one who actually cares about the theory that I'm obsessed with. <laughs> Good that, stuff. That, that, that's a common thing, uh, a common motif in microtonal music theory. I swear, <laughs> this one is actually useful this time, bro. I mean it, guy, bro. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> that feels yeah, like yeah, something yeah. that would be in the sequel to superstar sagas zen slander just just like <laughs> this theory that i came up with useful is useful bro i promise bro zender garden slander like zen slander but two <laughs> I, I, I really wanted to see i made a meme today that was that three headed dragon meme except it was giving them the hair of the dazzlings from Rainbow Rocks, Equestria Girls Rainbow Rocks, because one of them is the ditzy one. And so it's in that three-headed dragon meme where only one of the heads is looking funny. And I put primodality, RTT, QDTT, because it's not done and it's stupid. By the way, Do not like... fear. I collect all Zen, no matter how useless. All the Zen. Did, did anybody know that uh, the the song from that Zen slander video? I think it's called "Monsters uh, Monsters Under Your Head." All Zen shall be mine. Apparently, that song is mostly an eighteen EDO, which is like one of the weirder EDOs. I love eighteen. Uh, I am currently writing a piece in it. Eighteen, good. I also came up with my own theory to explain the different intervals of 18 Edo, but I haven't, it's not exactly as widely reaching as QDTT since not many people have any desire to use 18 Edo. Yeah, what's weird about 18 is because um, you have a circle of 21 over 16s instead of a circle of 4 over 3s, and then that kind of becomes your uh, system. And it becomes oneirotonic instead of uh, diatonic. Actually, my 18 Edo interval naming system is based on stacking alternating fifths. So it approximates a Pythagorean uh, circle of fifths. That's actually very clever because like, it ha- 18 Edo has the same whole tone as 12 Edo does. So that's actually a good way to yeah. use that system. That I think I didn't we actually consider. talked about this before, like in a previous podcast recording. Oh, no, it wasn't. No, it was in the server and not on the podcast. In one of the Zen Discord servers that we're in, we were talking about how to, this this idea that I came up with, and I'm sure many other people have come up with independently, where you stack different numbers of fifths. You have a, a more accurate fifth and a less accurate fifth, and you stack them to some certain fraction. And that fraction is what approximates, say, a Pythagorean circle of fifths, although it could be another circle of fifths. 16 EDO is very close to 1 to 2, 
that makes sense because um, 48 EDO is a multiple of 12. 18 EDO would be one to one. Yes, that's correct. They're almost exactly equally off. User, are you making that slapping sound? D is making drum beats. Oh. He's trying to cause chaos is what is what's going on. Band D. Right I love chaos. D's inventing a new draw inventing a new genre oh. called D and bass. <laughs> D and bass. <laughs> so the method that I used for calculating that <laughs> 18 Edo is one to one in terms of fifth accuracy and 16 Edo is two to one. So is 37. You just it's just the relative error turned into a fraction, really. You take the relative error and you multiply it by two and turn that into a fraction. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Actually, what you uh, said about 30, 37? 37, uh, because 111 EDO has a pretty good fifth. Although in 111, like every uh, prime is uh, sharp. Uh, sharply two. Well, then wouldn't that be like one to two or two to one? Because you're multiplying it by three, not two. Yeah, yeah, it would be two, two to one. Yeah, I said two to one or one to two. So, either yeah. one. I don't know which I actually said, but it was one of those. I don't know. For me, when we're talking about like such a big edos, it's, I guess it's almost easier to conceptualize them as is. So, like 37. Nice porcupine edo, that what I can say about it. <laughs> like, th it feels like 37 doesn't actually need uh, to be a dual fifth uh, system because its fifth is decent enough. I don't treat it like a dual fifth system. I yeah. totally, I've talked about 37 edo before and how it works as a great full 13 limit lattice system. And someone was like, Hey, isn't it no threes? And I'm like, yeah, if you're a coward. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It has one fifth that's diatonic and one fifth that's Mavilla. So just use the diatonic one. It's not that complicated. <laughs> that that reminds me of one time, I think, when I said, um, like, 750 cents is a fifth if you try hard enough or something. <laughs> With 37, you get, like, this super, like, extreme archy fifth, though. Yeah, so you just don't use the diatonic scale, generally speaking. I mean, I actually really like the diatonic scale of 37 and 32 Edo because it's a nice oceanfront temperament, which is a great way of mixing the 13 limit with the 7 limit. It's a very hard diatonic. It's a very hard diatonic, yes. It is... It's a very particular sound, but it's still a nice sound. It's a sound that I like to yeah. use. Uh, but you can also just, I mean, what I use is some of the scales of QDTT. I use the Neo-Gothic and Pentel Black Die scales. The construction of Black Die is bipentatonic, meaning that each archy chain of fifths only has five notes, which means you're not getting that very bizarre, hard effect. Explain Pentel to me versus Syntonic. Pentel and syntonic are the same thing. It just means two, three, five subgroup. Yeah. Syntonic, uh, I think of as just another word, a synonym, if you will, for five limit. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. I said bipentatonic. I just want to make sure we're not mixing those terms up. Bipentatonic is 10 notes, right? That's correct. Two pentatonic scales interwoven. Yeah. Some decatonic scales are easier to interpret as bipentatonic. So would 47 and 7 uh, temperament be flattest tone? I came up with this temperament called tragicomical, where it's such a flat tone temperament that instead of C to E being a pentel major third, it's C to E sharp. It's terrible. I've talked about this on the podcast before, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, you could just do, keep going on forever. You could make it such that 5 over 4 is C to E pentuple sharp. Is that even a word? Pentuple? I don't think so. I mean, maybe. Is that 5 sharps? Who knows? How about 100 sharps? Flattest tone temperament would actually be 7 and 47 CC. Well, I guess the limit is... I actually, 
no, theoretically, you could just keep going on forever. Yeah. You could theoretically make, I mean, sure, it's the, I'm sure you could find some crazy vow that's like a, a fraction of a cent sharper fifth than seven edel, where C to E and then a hundred sharps is a five over four. It's theoretically possible. Well, sure, but I meant like, you know. b -rolls. And maybe this is getting into like philosophy, but I feel like at some point there has to be like a flattest mean tone because at some point it stops being mean tone and it starts being Mavala. Well, right. I mean, in my opinion, the flattest thing you could call a mean tone is something where the sharp goes up in pitch and the flat goes down in pitch in the seven note MOS. And so the boundary would just be seven Edo. But I've, I've also heard that the true boundary for mean tone is between 26 and 33 Edo because that's where C to E stops being the most accurate five over four and it starts being C to E sharp, tragicomical temperament. So we could go on about this forever and I don't think it would be a very good idea. Uh, I was mainly just mentioning, you know, a hundred sharps because it would be funny. Also, whoever's tapping, please stop tapping. Someone is tapping. Yeah, user minus one, stop tapping. Oh, I was playing Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I had no idea that <laughs> tapping was audible. <laughs> I thought that was D. <laughs> really, D wasn't messing around? Wait, you said 26 EDO and what was the true limit of mean tone? Uh, it's in between 26 and 33 Edo. 33 is All the right. first Edo to use tragicomical temperament in patent Val. Yes. I think. I mean, it's the first one that's practical anyway. It maps 6 over 5 to 291 cents, which is ridiculous, but also fascinating if you're into neo-Gothic tunings like myself. That's really low. 6 over 5 is 291? Yeah. Uh, by patent Val, yes it is, because tragicomical is a pretty inaccurate temperament, and 6 over 5 just stacks both errors. User, are you finally going to stop? I, I've already Fondling stopped. the game controller. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> My ears. Would you stop it? I've already stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Would you quit making noise once? Well, that's what happens when I take my headphones and put the microphone, like, on one of the ear cups directly up to my mouth, so. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess I could do something like that, too. All right. Now D is tapping pro gaming. Sample it. Please do not make noises that are annoying. Please don't do it. Okay, thank you. Don't do it. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> that was a very jazzy beatbox. It sounds like you're on Xbox Live or something. <laughs> okay. I haven't even seen Skibbity Toilet, and I don't know, should I be afraid? Because isn't I don't that really like the new generation of memes? I don't really care about it. Apparently, that's like the, the Gen Alpha uh meme series did y'all ever call memes memes uh <laughs> teachers in our memes. well at least one teacher in my high school did i think at least according to someone i knew that had their class hey kids look at these funny memes <laughs> <laughs> what kind of voice was that i don't know it was a darley box man voice in high school one of my friends and I, like, well, one of my friends had this habit of sending, like, these really edgy memes to me, like, on Instagram. Bro, I seen all of the edgy memes back in the day on Kick, if anyone still remembers that. I'm too young to remember that. Wah. It's a wasteland now. Yeah. Wah. I think I have a Kick account, but I, like... I think I used it to talk to only one person, and like I completely forgot that I had such an account. I'm gonna add it to my list of accounts that I have because uh, maybe I'll delete it one day. Ne never go back to it. It's a degenerate platform now. Wow. Is it just like a bunch of edge lords from 4chan and 8chan and stuff? It, and it's Telegram? way worse than that. I don't even want to say the things. <laughs> Which uh, is what's this? the platform name again? Kick. Kick.
Like K I C K K I K. No, it's K I K. I used to text on Kick, like many years ago. I don't know what Kick is. It was really cool back in the day when I was in high school. Like that's where everyone was. There were so many group chats, so much. F- it was hilarious. Yeah, I joined a few group chats. None of them were ever fun. My fun group chats back in the day were on Skype. And then later Discord. I had Skype too. Yeah. I actually signed into my Skype account like a few days ago after like years just to examine like all of the lost people from over the years. It felt crazy. <laughs> we're keeping that in the podcast that was that was amazing we gonna win svs with that (laughs) (laughs) high ground 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 high 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 ground can you hear me ground please yes yes i could hear the whole thing I was I was beatboxing <laughs> along to D because she was saying high ground in a perfect rhythm. Yo, did you hear our song? <laughs> Sorry, we I left have returned you out. and I brought a little friend. He is made of lint and is my friend. Yay! Can I eat it? No. Well, technically, yes. Is anyone else thinking of the desert right now? Desert island rain. Uh, No, I'm actually thinking about Lint. Lint land. I'm thinking about desert island rain. Head empty. Why have Lint when you can have mint? Am I right? What about Linty mint? Why have mint Mint. when you can have desert island rain? I don't have Desert Island Rain. I have Desert Island Pain. <laughs> I love that with just the monophonic guitar in the background. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I-, I think we found a title for the episode. <laughs> Desert, Desert Island, Island paid. <laughs> <laughs> no amount of Desert Island rain will end the Desert Island pain. <laughs> Going Desert Island insane. You know, actually, Desert Island Insane is a new psychological phenomenon, which is a state that a person enters into after listening to Desert Island Rain for 24 hours straight. Wow. Zapatito Blanco, Zapatito Azul, El es una rata, como Pikachu. What's the stage that comes at 313 times or hours or something, whatever you said? I can't think straight because... Of the noise that's going on in the background. Well, that's the first sign of going desert island insane. That you keep hearing it in the background, no matter what else you're doing. Zapatito blanco, zapatito azul, eres una rata como Pikachu. Zapatito Zapatito Pikachu, Zapatito Azul, Elas 
una rata como Pikachu. Zapatito blanco, zapatito azul. Eres una rata como Pikachu. Zapatito blanco, zapatito azul. Eres una rata como Pikachu. Zapatito blanco, zapatito azul. Eres una rata como Pikachu. Zapatito blanco, zapatito azul. Eres una rata como Pikachu. Ah. Is that the end of the song? Did it did it fade out? I have no idea. Anyway, uh, what if we, uh, I don't know, got back on the rails a bit? <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry, I'm Ooh, just feeling tight. unhinged today. Yeah, I'll put my guitar back. Let's go. Did, did y'all like my Spanish rap song? Yeah, I think everyone there for a bit went Desert Island Insane. Nice. Yeah. Desert Island Insane. <laughs> Desert Island Pain. Desert Island, no pain, no gain. Desert Island in my brain. Was I Desert Island okay? I don't think your vocal tract can adequately be tuned to 313 EDO, so. Oh, I can do it. Check it out once. Uh... Yeah, see, pretty good. There's a lot of in between, but. The joke was that, did you not get the joke? It's that it was continuous. And so I'm yes, hitting every yes. note, technically speaking. That's, I was being wacky. Come on. Maybe the real desert island was the friends we made along the way. Yes. 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 Absolutely. The friends. Love. Yeah, may, maybe. Because uh, friendship. Woo. Is magic. My little... Speaking of EDOs, I wanted to, um, touch on EDO notation naming. So the issue with A, B, C, D, E, F, G, seven letters, heptonominal, is that at a certain point, sharps and flats cross over each other if you're doing like pure Pythagorean. Pentonominal is better, five letters, because I guess the, just the way it works out, it works better for 17 EDO and like maybe some other stuff a bit better, but um, what is really good is dodecanominal, which is 12 notes. And the reason why it works so well is because you actually just have more notes, so you can kind of push away ups and downs to use them for much larger EDOs like 130 and 270. So my system basically uses letters O through Z for the 12 nominals. Except you pronounce W as woo if you want to, because then that's just one syllable. Yeah, what do we call W for short? Well, we could go the Esperanto route and call it wo. Uh, some people say dub. I think wub is more fun. Wub. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Wub a dub dub. Woo. Yeah, woo is what I was thinking. Wub a dub dub dub. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Actually, woo, jokes aside, woo makes sense. Woo is good, yeah. So in 270, you have double sharps, double flats, and you have up to triple ups and triple downs. But the sharps and flats, if you have 12 letters, they never cross over each other. And if you use seven nominals with something like 270, then it becomes really confusing. And even for something like 41 EDO, like, you don't even have to use ups and downs anymore if you use 12 nominals, 12 letters. So that's why I think uh, dodecanominal is based. Sharp fifths tend to have a bias towards the number five, and flat fifths have a bias towards the number seven. So it makes sense that you would just want to get rid of that bias with the number 12. Yeah, actually it makes sense. <clears throat> is that, is that, am I understanding correctly? Yeah, I, I think that's why um, 17 okay. EDO works better with pentanominal, is because it has a bias towards the number five like a significant bias so i know you mentioned crossovers but the thing is i really love crossovers especially that one picture i found on derpy baru with garfield and fluttershy oh that's an episode uh, amazing crossover episode i'm sorry it? weren't we supposed to be doing a ranking notation systems thing i was being wacky okay that's fair so what do you like better the dodecanominal the standard hepta or septa nominal or with ups and downs or do you like the um the phonetic or syllabic way to do it i have not tried them so i just can't answer that question 
I haven't actually put this in like the Zen wiki yet, but maybe I could like make a user space page about it or something. Shoot, I have multiple of my own notation systems and I can't even decide when which one is better to be used in which situation. I actually went ahead and just used either a pentanominal or septanominal system with ups and downs. I, I made a list of notations all the way from 5 EDO to 72 EDO. And mm. I did this mostly on my phone. So it took quite a long time. Uh, towards the end, I switched over to using my uh, laptop with Vim, the greatest text editor of all time. And that's probably going to be debated by Emacs users. But um, <laughs> anyway, that is what my system uh, summary is all about. Those are the kind of two, uh, other than the list I made um, the, with the ups and downs, those other two systems are the ones I came up with. So uh, I don't know what you think about them or not. Actually, well, I don't really like syllabical ways of notating stuff. But at the same time, uh, here in Russia, it's like the uh, main representation of notes. So we don't ever go like C, D, E, F, and so on. You go Do, Re, Mi. We literally go... Yeah, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Well, that's solfege. Solfege is the name for um, giving the notes of the scale like a syllable. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But that's, again, that's just uh, seven uh, notes, which isn't enough. What I'm thinking of is not like, you know, from the beginning of a scale. I'm thinking of an absolute scale, like, a, B, C, yeah, yeah, yeah. E, F, G. yeah. We we use do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do as an absolute scale. So do is literally not the tonic. It literally means the C. Re is D, and so on. What do you call something that isn't diatonic, though? Like, what do you call E flat? Mi flat. Oh well, that's not too bad. So T would be a uh, B. Um, which may be confusing for anybody who wants to use the letter T in a thing. <laughs> Actually, yeah. What I wanted to say, there is one uh, advantage of using uh, syllabic notation for absolute pitches. It kind of helps with mnemonics of stuff. So when you learn a piece, you can sing it with the syllables and it kind of helps. Yes, that is really good. It's like on a piano how each key has its own, each note has its own shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but at the same time, while it helped me several times, I kind of tend to go away from, from it. Uh, more and more I feel that I, I don't really need uh such a possibility of like singing the notes at the same time as like representing them as much as i needed it before actually this might be helpful as a like uh for for, for teaching kids personally i prefer using letter names for notes because that leaves solfege available to be based purely on the tonic and not an absolute scale i think that's useful Add more syllables to translate sentences to music. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You got to use microtones for everything to keep the octave equivalents. I mean, you could use 26 EDO, um, A to Z. Just, I'm just imagining like a notation system where like each pitch is a different IPA phone name. <laughs> Well, since we're on the subject of ranking the best notation systems, we've all heard of using a larger Edo to notate a smaller Edo as a subset. Usually if that Edo is difficult to notate, such as uh, using 22 Edo notation for 11 Edo or 36 Edo notation for 18 Edo. Well, how about we do that, except the Edo isn't even a subset. You just approximate every note as well as it can be approximated in a larger Edo. Now, there's the real galaxy brain strategy. I said this before, but you could uh, basically translate the English language, or like at least words and stuff, into music if you use 26 EDO, which is actually like a decent scale. Hmm. I prefer 27, but maybe. 
what, like the space or the period or something? I feel like having spaces would be pretty useful. Yeah. I mean, I'm kidding. It's just because I like 27 Edo more. 26 Edo is pretty nice, actually. Yeah. 27 and 26 are both decent. Uh, 26 is a bit on the rough side in terms of, like, your major third is so flat. It's even flatter than 29 Edo. 26 plus 27, though. Oh, yeah. wow. You're right. It is flatter than 29. <laughs> and it's still mean toned by patent val you know what i can see why people are out here saying that 33 ito isn't technically mean tone like ugh, it kind of feels like it but i understand oh what about uh chinese characters uh, we could make like entire chinese sentences if we assign each chinese character to like 8539 edo or something 8539 is a strict Zeta EDO, I think. You know what would be an interesting idea is not mapping 26 EDO pitches to letters like A, B, C in order, but instead ordering them in a way that letters that frequently are seen next to each other have more harmonious relationships than other letters. That's a great So it would idea. make the output as musical as possible. Just with nice. Mapping. So E would be a fifth because that's the most common letter or something like well, that. Well, it would, maybe it would be, maybe it would be based off the tonic. Or so an like, octave. Yeah. Yeah. And then A would be a fifth or something like that. So eat would be like a, an, an octave and a fifth than like some other, like a minor seventh or something. As in the word eat, as in to consume. Yeah, I, th I think... I think we're all on the same page here. What if the alphabet song, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, what if that was literally in 26 EDO and each name of the note was like the letter? So it was just slowly ascending in 26 EDO for the entire song. You would need a lot of comma steps. Now, if only there was a type of music theory starting with Q tentatively that's good at dealing with lots i mean of that, is someone kind of a... peeing in the background uh, i'm washing my hands so quit close. peeing during my monologue <laughs> that'd be the weirdest villain encounter ever i'm like a super villain and the hero is like look man i haven't had i haven't had a chance to go to the bathroom in like a few hours so i'm just gonna have to go accident in the zender garden <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, there is one mission in GTA 5, which is called Derailed. Me. me Why are we talking me. about GTA 5 all of a sudden? The part of the bike that shifts the gears in the back is called the derailleur. That's vaguely similar. Yeah. Derailleur is a very hard word to spell. I didn't know how it was spelled until years after I found out what it meant. It messes with me all the time because... It's like a, it's a relatively normal word to me. And then I see it spelled and I'm Why like, wow. Why is there an E-U-R in it? Because French, it's thing that does thing, I would assume. I, I actually, I've never thought about this. I would assume derailleur is French for thing that derails. It is the derailleur. I've never yeah. realized that. I knew it was French, but actually, thank you for bringing this up. I've been enlightened. Gas enlightened. Roll <laughs> credits. Insert laugh track. In the bah, 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 hey, speaking bah, bah, of spelling, do you know what isn't a hard word to spell? A. A. So is it is it A or A-E? Is it spelled A or is it spelled E-H? Are you talking about A-Y-E? Like A. Okay, touche, touche. <laughs> I might have failed my um, language <laughs> Zendergarden class last year, but... I'm I'm pushing along. I'm I'm not going to be a Zender Garden dropout, especially cuz I'm the editor. That wouldn't be very good if I dropped out. <laughs> yeah, the, the, that would be I the think A Y E is I generally and not I. A. But you know what is A is a word that I will put at the end of sentences on occasion, and it's spelled E H. That's the Canada word. I only do it when I know that the people around me aren't going to laugh at me for it because it's a good word. I like using it, but sometimes people make fun of me for it. Ha ha, Ground uses a silly word. Ground uses a silly word. No bullying in the Zender Garden! What do you mean? 
I'm not bullying. I'm just uh, making fun of ground. <laughs> then don't make fun of ground. Make boring of ground. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Ground. Um, Let's how, do, how do I make boring? Um, um, boring. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is boring sounds. Boring. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want to come and roast Halberstadt keyboards with me? I actually think that they're okay. They are not as bad as Zenners like to say they are. I like the tactility. What, I what, like are, the what are they called? Halberstadt keyboards. I am going to attempt to spell that and put it into Google. The thing about roasting Halberstadt keyboards is I don't think uncooked Halberstadt keyboards would taste that good. So I don't know why you would roast them personally. I just don't see the point. See, in it. that's what I really have to do. I got to pivot my business model. I'm not going to make keyboards that are FPGA based and Zen harmonic. I'm going to make keyboards that are made out of some sort of edible substance that can be roasted, such as food. I couldn't think of anything that you roast other than meat. Bro, this is just a normal keyboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a normal keyboard. Literally. Why didn't you say so? What do you think the best isomorphic keyboard layout is? Is it uh, Bosenquet or is it like square grid things like on I, the I kinda, launch pad? I kind of like harmonic table. It's really fun. Okay, so so you mean like uh, the difference between like hexagonal and like uh, square keys? Who does it the best? Me. Mm. Yeah, sure you do. <laughs> I actually like the long rectangular ones. I feel like you could make a good hybrid between an isomorphic keyboard and one that has the tactility of a Halberstadt. I'm starting to have more faith in the long rectangles than even the hexagons. Well, that'd be a Bosen K. Uh, like imagine like a fully weighted Bosen K keyboard. It would be rather expensive and it'd be heavy, um, but it doesn't seem like it'd be super hard to make. Imagine like <clears throat> basically having like the mechanics of like, uh, like an upright piano or something. Like, instead of having, like, all the parts, though, you just have, like, you know, the the lever that extends out from the key, and then you have, like, uh, you have, like, another lever that just kind of swings and hits something and comes back down, and, and how hard it hits something, or, the like, the whatever pressure pad or, or something, maybe put, like, a Hall effect sensor in the thing that's being hit will determine the velocity. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't... I don't have any intention of producing weighted keyboards, but I'll definitely look more into the Boson K layout. I don't really care about the shape of uh, keys of isomorph on isomorphic layout, unless they uh, if they are like uh, awkwardly shaped, like too long and narrow. That's just uncomfortable. But if they are of reasonable proportions, I don't have a strong opinion about them. The only thing that kind of matters for me is whether or not uh, octave, uh, the key uh, octave above a uh, given key, is uh, exactly horizontal in relation. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty useful. Yeah, if it is the case, it's just more comfortable. Yeah. Where's, like, the cutoff point to where Halberstock keyboards don't work very well anymore? 31. Like, I think 31 is a bit overkill. 31 is is the cutoff point. Uh, it is kind of playable, uh, but uh, it is uncomfortable. Anything uh, really that is uh, bigger than 31 is basically close to unplayable. Uh, what about 22? Like, your sharp, like, area would have to be divided into three keys, I think, for it to be, like, a diatonic structure. And 27 would have to be four. I don't think that uh, diatonic uh, structure is the best choice for 22. I think uh, for stuff like 22, you should use porcupine as a base scale altogether. That's fair. And personally, I think that black dye makes a better base scale for 22 Edo. Yeah, maybe I could try using black dye. Um, 
uh, even in... like for a Halberstadt uh, keyboard? I'm trying to design one currently. It hasn't been the easiest. I'm going to keep working on it and see if it pans out. I don't know. You could use Tetracot for 29, right? It de- it really depends what you use 29 for. Personally, I think 29 is best when it's just using its diatonic scale. Isn't it like the the most gentle of the gentle fifths? Yeah, I would say so. It tunes 1311 about just, whereas 46 you know, tunes 1411 about just. Or 11.7, if you wanted to be simpler. Fun story. I got a, um, I got this little thing from like the last electronics meetup that I went to um, called a Tomu or something like that. And I, I think I got like an ARM microprocessor or something like that. Tomu is like a, a little motherboard thing or a circuit board that fits into a USB drive. And there's one of them that's an FPGA, and it's like a fully open source tool chain and work uh, program like um, platform that you can uh, basically write code and test code for FPGAs on, which is pretty cool. I believe they also make uh, PCIe FPGA boards, so you can just stick it right in your computer and you can probably have a more powerful FPGA on board for development. That's cool. Yeah, screw the big FPGA. That's what we're going to call them. The people who overcharged people for their stupid proprietary um, uh, tool chains and stuff. Dang, things heating up in the FPGA fandom. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, a fandom wiki page on FPGAs with like all of the lore about it? Are people out there writing FPGA fan fiction? <laughs> <laughs> we we might start doing it. I mean, if it exists, you know. Even though they were two different silicon manufacturers, well, they both spoke Verilog. They just couldn't help but fall in love. <laughs>